15 to 10, Villanova with the lead over Notre Dame. 11.49 to go here in the first half as the Cats try and pull the upset. And how about some Coach of the Year candidates, uh, Tim, around the country? You talk about Mike Bray, and he's got a back room full of trophies already from his Coach of the Year. Three honors in the Big East, but national, no question about it. He's in the discussion, and Tommy Izzo always plays the iron early in the season. You kind of forget about him because they drop some tough games, but one thing, his teams always get better February and March, and this guy kind of quietly leading his team into the top 10 this year, but they don't play quietly. They just play determined basketball. And Frankie, not really a popular choice in Missouri. I don't know why not. The guy can coach. He was successful at Miami. Great pedigree. Tremendous person. Great basketball coach. Very difficult job. He's done a great job this year. Well, there is the list with Thompson, Haith, Calipari, Beheim, and Self. Your candidates. Well, and there, you could add five or six more guys to that, and, and certainly all these guys have done a A++ job. You just Each of them have their own reasons why they're on that list, but even you, you go down to Mike Bray should be on that list. Buzz Williams at Marquette, Steve Fisher at Michigan, Steve Prohm at Murray State. All quality, quality years and seasons. And How about our friend right down the road here in, in Philadelphia, Dr Bruiser Flint? At Drexel. How about that? Drexel, a winner today. Of course, big uh, bracket buster weekend. Drexel, I think, 4-0 and now in their bracket buster games. And uh, this year, I think that stretches the winning streak now to 15 in a row for Drexel. We're over near their campus today. Notre Dame had their shoot-around down at the Palestra because there was a hockey game going on here this afternoon. Penguins beat the Flyers. Pinkston off the bounce, short on the shot. Heading into that last timeout, Villanova on a 10-0 run. And Notre Dame has not scored now in six straight trips up the floor. Sure right, sticking with a man-to-man, -man, I think it's a good move. Their man looks much more aggressive than their zone, which looked very soft and left ND wide open on the perimeter. Atkins taking it down the lane. Sutton was able to bother that shot. There's the size that Jay Wright put into the lineup tonight. Yaru and Sutton, man in the middle. And the three at the other end for Pinkston. 13 unanswered for Villanova. Seven now for Pinkston in the first half. They're running right by Notre Dame right now. Notre Dame looks like their feet are stuck in the mud on this 9 o'clock start, and Villanova's flying. It is already plus 10 on the glass for Villanova here in the first half. Cooley inside gets it to roll over the front of the rim. Well, that's where the moneymaker is. You've got to go to that guy. And sometimes Notre Dame goes through stretches where they were, will ignore him. So they've got to make sure they go through him on a lot of possessions out there and make Yaru guard him. That ended the 13-0 run. Johnson playing with some poise and some confidence at the point without Malik Waynes tonight. The pull up from the elbow. Great job by Johnson on the pick and Notre Dame just going underneath and not showing, not helping, not recovering. Cooley the kick out. Martin will try for three. Had Sutton running at him again. Sutton has been very bothersome defensively for Notre Dame thus far. At that length out there at 6'11", the junior from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Here you see Villanova running the clock down, using the possessions, no backup for Ty Johnson, staying with their iron five out there on the floor. Cheek fadeaway over Dragovic. Yaru tried the tip. Martin comes away with it. You see Cheek very active, and we talked about his need to score tonight, but he also sees Dragovic on him, which opens his eyeballs a little bit because he knows Dragovic is not a good one-on-one -on -one defender. Number 10 on the clock, Cooley. Atkins takes it inside in traffic. Out of bounds off of one of the Villanova bodies. Four seconds on the shot clock. 
They love doing a nice job on defense, showing on that high screen, on the rotation. Cooley kind of left alone in the high, at the high post, but he's not going to take that shot, and then they close the gap on Atkins' drive. Darren Hilliard, Marcus Kennedy, a couple of freshmen will check into the game, and now looks like Mike Bray wants to talk about what they're going to do here with four seconds on the shot clock. 6-7 freshman out of Brooklyn. Last seven games, his numbers are up 15 points and nine rebounds per game. Had that huge outing in the Providence win, led the comeback. The officiating crew doing some cleanup duty. Atkins inbounds to Martin Cooley, set the screen for him. Rebounded by Hilliard. Now he'll run the point for a bit. Notre Dame just one of its last nine shots. Jay Wright told us we got to get some help from the Irish. We got to have them missing some shots. And so far that's been the case. It has, but offensively they've done a nice job of pushing the floor, handling the ball, running good offense. Cheek going off the bounce. Drops it off for Yuru. Nice pass. Couldn't squeak that one up over the rim. And now Cheek outside for three. He got it. Eight points for Cheek. And it is a double-digit lead for Villanova. The Irish have come out. The home court of College Hoops Sunday on ESPN U3 and on the Watch ESPN app. And of course, uh, ESPN, your exclusive home for the Women's NCAA Basketball Championships. Congratulations, by the way, to the St. John's women. Just moments ago, they beat Connecticut, halting the UConn women's home court winning streak at 99 games. Rough day for UConn basketball fans, both the men and the women tasting defeats. Yaru backing in on Cooley. Cooley left in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and Yaru just carved out the space. It took it right through the big guy's chest, and no support from Notre Dame from the perimeter. They're going to let Yaru go one-on-one -on, -one on the inside. Just two points in nearly nine minutes now for Notre Dame. Martin, no good. That's a look to stretch the lead. We asked Jay Wright who his backup point guard was tonight, and he hesitated. He I think he had to think about it for a minute, and then he said Darren Hilliard. <laughs> he was clearly not a point guard, but he has no other choice out there, and he's just doing a solid job right now. Pinkston trying to get into the lane. To which I'm, I, I replied, Hilliard? With the question mark at the end of my voice. I had a good laugh about that, but Hilliard backing up Johnson today without Waynes, without... James Bell down two starters, but not affecting them on the scoreboard in the least. Villanova on top of Notre Dame, and they are charged up here in the first half at home. 25 to 12, Villanova leading 25th ranked Notre Dame tonight in Philadelphia. The Fighting Irish just 29% shooting. And uh, the Cats doing a nice job on Big East Player of the Week, Jack Cooley thus far. Well, start, started the two big guys, Maurice Sutton and Mouf Taliaru, along with Pinkston up front. So there's been a lot of bodies around Jack Cooley so far. And, let him catch the ball, but not letting him. They're working before he catches it, not to let him, let him get great post presence and post space. So far, so good. And when he does make a move, there's a lot of help. Look at that. The last three games, all double doubles 21 points, 14 boards. And but tonight, just a couple of shots thus far, four points. They are getting wiped out on the boards. Villanova has more offensive rebounds, nine, than the Fighting Irish have total at six. That's one thing that Villanova has been solid with all season is their rebounding. They're plus five on the year. They've got to just keep helping out like they did right there on that play. 
Offensive foul on Grant. The charge taken by Pinkston. Well, Jay Wright was worried about offense and missing shots, but he's got his team defense geared up at a high level. Not only defending Cooley on the box, but the help side recovery on the weak side from Pinkston. Ooh, that was awfully close to the foot inside the arc. It looked like Pinkston may have just gotten it out of there in time. Timmy Higgins has still got that steel eye. He would never miss a call <laughs> like that. Pinkston trying to go to work on Connaughton. The step back. Cooley corrals it. Connaughton looking for three. That's good. It's been the one bright spot for Notre Dame. Their third triple here in the first half. Well, that's where Villanova has to be very careful. They put a soft trap on the ball screen at the top, and on their rotations, Notre Dame is very effective finding the open man. Kick out to Pinkston. Nice dribble penetration by Johnson to set that up and draw the defender. And Pinkston now with 10. Showing all parts of his game tonight. First spinning into the lane and now a couple threes. Skip to Connaughton for three more. Sutton able to tip it to himself. Just under five minutes to go, and Villanova flirting with the 30-point mark. This Notre Dame team, during this seven-game winning streak, has only been given up about 55 points a night, but Villanova raining on them right now. Cheek with 11. The Cats already have two in double digits here in the first half, and they are doubling up Notre Dame plus one. Nova will keep attacking the lane and kicking out for open threes. Jay Wright's club seven assists, just a couple of turnovers, and Ty Johnson, terrific running the show. Hilliard also getting some minutes at the point. Cheek over to help out defensively, gets the block. Johnson doing a nice job guarding Atkins as well, keeping him under containment. That time he got in the lane a little bit, but it was under duress. And then Pinkston on the backside couldn't finish. Pointing out is just 6 of 20 here in the first half. Pinkston, and that's just a mismatch. Connaughton can't keep up. Now we're in Philadelphia, Beth, but Javon Pink Pinkston thinks he's on West 4th Street in the city. <laughs> little one-on-one. -on -one. Let's take my man to the hole. 23 for Pinkston and Cheek combined here in the first half. Grant... Sutton sends it out. Well, Javon Pinkston came into Villanova with a lot of hype. The success has been delayed, but Jay Wright will take this. As of late, he's making things happen. Hang in the air. Action out in Utah. We'll take you live. Big first half for Villanova, 33 to 15 over 25th ranked Notre Dame trying to end the Irish seven game winning streak. Pinkston and Cheek combining for 23 points and a big difference from Wednesday at USF, their first game without Malik Waynes. You know, I think Beth, it's having one game under their belts, playing without Waynes, understanding he's not playing tonight and they played a full game without him. They weren't successful and also, they're at home, clearly more confident. Jay's not panicking with this ball club. And also, South Florida's defense is a lot better than Notre Dame's yeah. defense is tonight. And I think that's why you've seen Mike Gray burn all these timeouts. He's upset with the effort on the defensive end of his ball club. Already used three timeouts, three and a half to go. And they've hit just three of their last 16 field goal attempts for a team that is usually very efficient offensively. Pinkston fouled on the drive. Again, a piece of Pinkston's game that is very difficult to defend. He's good with both hands. He can spin. He's got good feet, but he also likes the contact when he gets in the lane. And that time he kind of lowered his shoulder. He saw that the defender, Brooks, was off balance, so he just lowered his shoulder and drew the foul. 
Averages nine points per game, but he's already at 12. He's a 66% free throw shooter. You just look at his body. Going his way. Just look at his body from the beginning of the year, too. He's got himself in better shape. He's played himself into better basketball condition. You can see the increased quickness, not only in the offensive end, but on the defensive end of the floor as well. Kingston now with 14. Villanova 5 of 6 from the line. Notre Dame has not attempted a free throw here in the first half. Marquette got the win today on the road at UConn, so Notre Dame has to win here to stay in a tie for second place as Joey Brooks scores on the drive. That would be two games behind Syracuse in the Big East, and the Orange playing at Rutgers on ESPN tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. And he gets it inside to Sutton, trying to get around Cooley, and does so. Well, that's why Mike Gray is upset. Give Maury Sutton all the credit in the world. He worked hard to get the ball and make the move, but no help or resistance from Notre Dame. Kennedy rebounds to Dragovich miss. Notre Dame under 30% shooting here in the first half as we approach the two-minute mark. A little burn Villanova style here, Beth. <laughs> Using up the clock wisely. Villanova finding the seams. Another good distribution from Johnson to find Kennedy. Terrific poise at the point for the freshman. Biggest lead of the half here for Villanova. Martin fouled outside by Sutton, and that will be the second on the big guy. Sunday night ESPNU is your home for ACC basketball. It's fourth-ranked Duke taking on Boston College at 6 Eastern. Things will get underway with the ACC Sunday night pregame show at 5.30. It's ACC Sunday night basketball presented by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Jay Wright has his team ready to go tonight. Up 20 on Notre Dame. For a club coming in that had lost four of its last five and uh, their poorest offensive performance of the season in the loss at USF midweek. Whole different story here tonight as Cooley gets the stick back. Well, it's just been a clinic for Villanova. An offensive execution and here to the rack. The alley-oop to Sutton couldn't quite hang on to it. Well, you can't fault Villanova. They get a little pressure from Notre Dame after the bucket, and they threw over the top, and they had a two-on-one. I'd like to see Pinkston just attack a little bit better there, maybe draw the defender, and then a simple bounce pass to Sutton. Third turnover of the half for Villanova. They've taken pretty good care of the ball. Grant. And in the passing lane, knocked out of bounds. Cooley's got eight, Martin with six. The leading scorers here in the first half for Notre Dame. Cooley trying to go to work on Kennedy, turns to the right and scores. Kennedy not doing a good job inside there. And Cooley, that's why he's, his numbers have been great because he's carving out space. And Villanova's done a good job tonight of making him work before he catches it. That time, he, got, he won the battle. Pinkston. Settled for the jumper that time. Let's see if they'll get Cooley a touch here. Jack hasn't missed tonight. Five for five. Shot clock is off for the Irish. And the staff not happy with that jumper. They wanted Javon Pinkston to go one on one, get into the lane, and get to the free throw line. Corner for Brooks, lost the handle. 
Villanova running the double at Grant, forcing him to give it up. 2.1 to go in the half. Eric Atkins to inbound. Grant launches it up in time, but it won't go. The dominant performance in the first half for Villanova, led by Javon Pinkston. Along with Dominic Cheek, the two of them outscored Notre Dame here in the first half, 25 to 23. Up by as many as 20 in this first half, they'll take it up 16 into the locker room. Now let's join Dari and Dino in the studio at the Sports Center U halftime report. And Pinkston, his ability to go with both hands and shake and bake from the perimeter and also step out and knock down the open shot. He and Dominic Cheek have been very active on the glass with their leadership today, their energy, and then also not only offensively but defensively really getting up and bothering Notre Dame on the perimeter. Pinkston leading all scores with 14, Cheek with 11. For the Fighting Irish, Jack Cooley's got 10. He hasn't missed. He's 5 for 5. But the problem is the rest of the team just 5 for 23. Atkins, Martin, Grant, Connaughton, and Cooley. The same starters out there in the dark jerseys for Notre Dame. And Pinkston will be whistled for the shove. He's back out there with Sutton, Yaru, Cheek, and Ty Johnson. Once again, the Wildcats playing without two starters injured, Malik Waynes and James Bell. And their defense has just been solid. They started in the zone, and just their man has been very aggressive the last 15 minutes of the first half. Grant will pull up. Nice tip by Yaru out to Pinkston. Irish coming in, riding a seven-game winning streak they need a victory tonight to stay in a tie for second place in the Big East with Marquette Wildcats are sub 500 looking to build a little momentum heading into New York uh, probably their only chance to get in is the automatic bid by winning the Big East tournament Not sure when Waynes and Bell would be able to return. Cooley with the tip, his first miss. Villanova continues its dominance on the glass. A total dominance, 24 to 10 at, at the break. And also, Villanova's been helped by Notre Dame's soft pressure. They're not, Notre Dame doesn't get up and press you half court. They don't, they don't overplay. So Villanova's been able to just take their time and they see things a little bit better when you're not under pressure. Pinkston off the nice fake, draws the foul. And it's going to be on Atkins, his first. Burn becomes a lot more problematic, Tim, with a large deficit, doesn't it? Notre Dame hasn't seen a lot of this. Absolutely. And they're going to have to pick up the pressure. Mike Gray talked about that today, that they were going to extend a little bit, but Villanova's answered. Anytime Notre Dame has picked up the pressure, it's not really the way they play. So Villanova has spaced the court and attacked, and in that last possession took their time as well on, in the hot half court and then just isolated Pinkston off that pinch post area where he's so effective. Pinkston able to get the second. Notre Dame still without a free throw tonight. The Cats are six of eight. Martin spinning inside. Good help D by Yaru to block it. Irish keep it. Grant 
Check the toes and another swat by Sutton. The foul will not be on him. I think that's what Atkins and Grant have to do. I mean, they're, they're playing at such a slow pace now. With down 17, not having got to the line at once all night. This will be their first attempt, but they get to the line 21 times a game. So you can see they've played a soft game, not only defensively, but offensively attacking the rim. Jaron Grant is still scoreless tonight. He does have five assists. And there's his first point this evening. There's the first Irish free throw attempts of the evening. Ty Johnson. Ty Hopper off the rim. Compton's got it. That's where the pressure of Notre Dame did bother Johnson. Villanova never got into a set on that possession. Atkins attacks, finds Martin. Second chance for Martin. Come out with it again. Johnson on the run. Nice hesitation. Drops it off for Yaru. Lost the handle. Stripped out of there by Notre Dame. Well, under pressure from Atkins, Johnson still has to run the club. And that's where Cheek has to do a better job of getting open for his backcourt mate. Tough pass to handle inside. Villanova turns it over. That was the right idea, though. They're sharing the ball. I like the way Villanova is looking. They're looking for each other out there on the court. So often is the case when you lose your leading scorer, as they have done without Waynes. Jonathan Cooley, good position inside. On the skip pass, uh, Cooley. That's where you have to do your work before the catch, and that time Yaru didn't. Cooley just buried him right in front of the rim and finished it. Cooley now six for seven tonight. Kingston. Martin, weak side. And Grant on the run. Out of control. Couldn't decide if he wanted to go right or left. Well, Jack Cooley doesn't really wow you with his quickness or his jumping ability, but smarts, toughness, and his ability to find the space and move without the basketball. That's why he's so high percentage. He keeps moving in and around the lane until he finds that perfect angle for the easy bucket. Knew that ball reversal was coming, and Cooley now with a dozen points to go along with five boards. And that last foul, by the way, the second on Grant. Well, back in the old days, the big guys used to go to the Pete Newell big man camp, and they still had that. They would show that clip right there on how to get open and how to move without the basketball for a big guy. Jay Wright wants a timeout. Three and a half minutes gone. And Villanova up 14 on Notre Dame. Forty to twenty-six, Villanova on top of Notre Dame, and what makes it even more surprising is the fact that the Wildcats are doing it without their leading scorer and their point guard. Well, I, you know, when you talk about important players on ball clubs, there's maybe not one guy in the entire Big East Conference that's more important to his team than Malik Wayne. That's tonight's surprise is, is so impressive from Jay Wright's group because of the fact that Wayne's not only you look at his scoring but just does so much on the floor as far as leadership you know, takes the big shots uh, you know, all the young guys look to him for advice on and off the court and you know, hey, sometimes sometimes a group just comes together and I think you see it tonight with the performance of Cheek and Pinkston they're just stepping up their game they're not waiting for Malik Wayne's because they know he's not going to be in the lineup Wayne's a guy that is often flirting with a triple-double, had that terrific three-game stretch earlier this year. He scored 39, 25, and 28 points in three straight games. Little sample of what he is capable of doing offensively. 
I don't know if it's got to stick to their game plan that got them this lead, though, and that wasn't it on that last possession. A quick shot by Johnson. They've got to keep moving the ball, let everybody touch it. And Jay Wright called that quick timeout because they're now without a field goal and a couple of turnovers here early in this second half. Notre Dame trying to creep back in it. Down 16 at the break. And the three-pointer good by Connaughton, and they've cut the deficit to 11. Well, that was caused because Bill, uh, Notre Dame ran their offense through the big guy, Jack Cooley, down in the box. He drew the attention of the defense. They dug in. He skipped it to the weak side, found the open man for the three. Cheek off the ball, fake, floats it into the lane and scores. Dominic now 13 points, one above his game average. Brent back over to Atkins, another triple. Cheek with the push. Off the crossover, leaves it for Sutton who couldn't hang on. That's one the big guy's got to grab. Another quick shot from the Irish, and that one's good. A triple by Grant. That's his first basket. Five points now for Jaron Grant. A little dicey feeling in the building right now because Villanova's offense is a little skittish. They've got to get the ball into Pinkston's hand, get him into the high post. Notre Dame switching defense now in the 2-3. Cheek barely catches iron. Sutton got a hand in the passing lane. Well, that's something you rarely see. Kind of a sloppy turnover for Notre Dame. They just, they're so efficient with the ball. About 10 turnovers per game. Kingston on the dribble drive. Sutton has had an impact on the defensive end and now trying to have one on the offensive end as well. How about on cue, the big guy Sutton flashing into that gray area inside the zone and Looks pretty skillful making the J. Getting his hand in passing lanes. He's blocked uh, three shots. He's probably bothered three others. Grant using the Cooley screen. Connaughton swooping in to keep it alive. Young man will be joining the Notre Dame baseball team when the season is over. But right now, his thoughts are on a comeback. Villanova still up a dozen. Forty-four to thirty-two, Villanova with the lead over the twenty-fifth-ranked Fighting Irish. We got thirteen thirty-seven to go here in Philadelphia. And uh, Tim Welsh, take us inside the plate. Well, Notre Dame likes to run their offense through Jack Cooley to score, but also to draw attention and to. Get support for his three-point shooters in here. The big guy knows how to create space and finish, but he also knows how to draw attention from the weak side. You see him here or there. The, the support comes from the top. It's not a straight double. It's just a support. He sees it. The weak side help drawn in. Nice skip pass to Connington for the open three. You touched on it a little bit. Despite the double-digit lead a, a sense of unease a little bit for Villanova fans they remember uh, that loss here to Marquette where they were up 18 back in late January and could not hang on ended up losing that game up 16 here at the break and Cooley crashing the glass goes over to the Cats I think the reason Villanova is they take the quick shots the last few possessions and need to get everybody touching the ball get Pinkston look into Yaru make Cooley guard him on the low box Foul on the shot Will send Dominic Cheek to the free throw line Well Sunday night ESPNU is your home for ACC basketball presented by Reese's peanut butter cups We'll get underway at 530 with the ACC Sunday night pregame and then it's Duke Boston College at 6 on ESPNU, ESPN3, and on the watch ESPN app. And that last foul on Scott Martin, his third personal. And in Big East play, Mike Bray really has only gone to a couple guys off the bench seven deep. And Martin will stay out there. Martin, Cooley, Atkins, and Grant all over 30 minutes per game. 
Martin and Grant at 37. Atkins at about 39 per game in Big East play. And Atkins short on the pull-up. Nice job by Sutton just chasing down. And Notre Dame doesn't really crash the offensive glass. But you saw Martin in there with Cooley. Down by 13. A little bit of anxious offense for Notre Dame. Hilliard may have forced that one, but they're going to get Cooley for the foul. That'll be the second on the big fella. Here's your 40-minute men for Mike Gray. Eric Atkins nine times, including all 50 minutes in that double overtime win against Louisville. Martin has only missed two minutes in their last five games. Well, Mike Gray understands this, and this is why, why they play not only offensively with the semi-burn, so to speak, and they'll run when they have to on opportunity, but defensively, they don't extend themselves. They pick up about it at the three-point line. It's a help and support defense. And very, very solid. Keep the game in the 60s and low turnovers. And just great sharing of the ball and understanding of the game. But tonight, not a great effort defensively as far as forcing Villanova off their mark. 14 minutes from the bench players so far tonight for Notre Dame. Just 12 for Villanova. So both sides playing a lot of minutes with the same guys. Rebounded by Kennedy. The other thing Mike Gray talked about is the schedule. He said, you know, when you're picked to finish in the middle of the pack, you're not on national television a lot during the week. So they only have two Saturday-Monday quick turnarounds in Big East play this year. Well, all that figures into it. But right now, Villanova needs to take advantage, both Cooley and Grant on the bench for Notre Dame. Atkins whistled for the reach in. That'll be the second on Eric. Villanova maintaining right now. They've got the double digit lead on Notre Dame. With Machado, Michael Glover inside, just a beast in the paint. And Lamont Momo Jones, the transfer from Arizona, at the off guard spot. So they have a lot of firepower. Defense, defense is not one of their priorities, but <laughs> they can really score the basketball. And uh, they've had a great season under Tim Kloos. Good day, too, for Drexel, another uh, Philly team. They got the win. 15 straight now for Drexel. Tied for first place in the Colonial. Of course, last year, the Colonial sent VCU to the Final Four. Third foul now on Cooley, so he and Martin playing with three. That's the sixth team foul on Notre Dame. Villanova offensively a little different story here in the second half after they shot it close to 50% in the first. That has kept the door open for the Irish. Connaughton, no. Martin offensive rebound, and he's fouled. Dominic Cheek pointing to his chest and saying, hey, that's on me. I didn't get a body on Martin. Well, Villanova did a nice job on the initial break because Notre Dame tried to get a run out. But Nova made them take a pretty contested shot, but on the back side, just didn't close out the play, and Martin's so tough. Scott's having a night where he's struggling from the floor, but uh, when you talk to Mike Gray, there's no doubt in his mind that Martin is the most valuable player on this Notre Dame team. He doesn't need any headlines, and that's not your norm for a senior. Usually they want a little bit of the... Of the Notoriety, and he doesn't get any, he doesn't want any, he wants the team to win. And that's a, a coach's dream, no less. Johnson, the cheek, he looks for three. Sutton offensive rebound, and Sutton strong to the rim. Been able to take it out. Irish have numbers on the move. Grant Atkins stops outside the arc and drills it. I think Notre Dame is doing better. They're cleaning up the glass and 
when they do, they're trying to attack. I think Mike Briggs told this team, we need to pick up the pace a little bit, try to close the gap. Down by as many as 20 tonight. It's back into single digits. Pinkston, no. Notre Dame will push again. Grant. Wisely waited on it, and Cooley fills the lane. Second chance with the left, third chance, no. And they won't get a fourth. Well, Notre Dame is doing a better job. They got beat up in the first half on the glass, but they're more active, not only on the defensive glass, but getting up the floor. You see the lanes filled, they're running to the rim and to the three-point line where they can be very dangerous. Cheek forced that one up. Ooh, that's being kind. That's a horrible shot by Cheek. He's got to be smarter on the offensive end. Grant off the dribble. And the reach-in foul is going to be called on Johnson. Now you could say it's inexperienced, but guys like Dominic Cheek and Yao Ru, Sutton, they've been around. You know, they're not, they haven't been primetime players, but here we are in the middle of the late February, and she has to understand that they've got to keep running their offense or they're going to this lead is going to be gone They're just two for 11 in the second half shooting Grant Martin Atkins Sutton hits the block and Now matched up on the point guard outside. He looks ready. He's down in the stance <laughs> Staying low Atkins trying to go to work on him gives it up Connaughton three Cheek comes away with it. If they put stars on your shirts like they do in football on your helmet, give Maurice Sutton a two or three on that possession. First the block and then the one-on-one -on -one defense on the point guard. Kingston. Atkins the other way. Eric Atkins. Count it. Yaru with the goaltend. And it's down to a seven-point game. You talked about the board work by Notre Dame making more plays. They're plus seven now in the second half after they were a negative 14 on the boards in the first half. Well, the guy in the sidelines is no question. Well, he peeled a little paint with his halftime talk about effort on the glass, the defensive intensity, and their defense has really bothered Villanova this half into tough shots. Nice job by Connaughton, giving Pinkston a little space, allowing him to shoot from the perimeter. Johnson using the screen. And they continue to struggle offensively in the second half. Grant, one-on-one. -on -one. Sutton might have gotten a piece of another one. Well, if he didn't get a piece, he clearly bothered it and just sprinted back from the other end of the floor. And he's keeping him in this ball game right now with his energy. And he takes the pass for the lay-in. He's gassed to the big guy. He waved to Jay. He said, Coach, I love the minutes, but I need one. <laughs> His first start of the season, eight points and four blocks. Well, I'm not big on ovations for effort because you're supposed to give the effort, but this guy will get one from this crowd. Cooley gets the layup. I think Notre Dame called a timeout. They will have just the one remaining. But Maurice Sutton. For a guy that's averaged seven and a half minutes per game this year, he played 18 in the first half and now up to 29 a season high. Jay Wright says, don't get comfortable in that seat. You're going to be back in soon. Well, he's, he's giving Maurice a little bit of a lecture on life right now. A couple plays because he wants to keep using him. He understands he's found something here, but it will be a knock on the head coach's door tomorrow and say, hey, coach, <laughs> need a little bit more PT. I can play a little bit. They are not sure when Bell will come back from the ankle or Wayne's from the knee. Pinkston. First basket of the second half. 
for Javon. Back up to a 10-point lead. Well, that's his spot when he gets his feet set. Looks very comfortable in that corner. Martin to Connaughton off the drive. A triple for Pat Connaughton now with 12 points. All of them outside the arc. I'm very surprised that both teams giving a lot of help in the paint on the drives from ball side and leaving guys wide open on driving kicks. Johnson got into the lane, lost the handle. Foul called on Notre Dame. You know, both sides starting to fire it up from downtown. Well, offense was a little bit loose in the first half, but then the three started raining in the second half. We're starting to find their way with the drive and kicks on both ends. The Irish trying to hang in. CapitalOneCup.com. Fifty-one to forty-four, Villanova leading at Notre Dame, and a significant development leading into that last timeout. Cooley called for his fourth personal foul. And there it is. They call the reach in on Jack, who has fouled out three times this season. Got tangled up with Ty Johnson. The officials did go to the monitor to double check and make sure that it was Cooley. So he sits right now with 639 to play. That's the old Jay Billis philosophy. Wait a minute. You called the foul. How come you don't know who it's on? <laughs> <laughs> That's Jay, not me. <laughs> Well, we're laughing, but they're not laughing on no. the Notre Dame sideline because of the fact of that guy right there. He, I think Mike could put him back in the game. He's enough of a veteran, and Villanova does not look to go through their post guys that often. Just got to bring his game back a notch defensively. Make sure he doesn't have a reach in like he did on that position. Johnson able to hit the free throw. Career high with six assists, replacing Malik Waynes tonight. Gets a couple of free throws as well. Notre Dame's been chipping away. They've gotten it to within nine here in the second half. Dragovic, nice back door, round it out. Missed opportunity there. Yaru, cheek with the slash, gives it up for the big fella, stripped by Martin. Scott goes down on the deck to get it. Well, that was as much a foul by Yaru reaching in on Martin as Cooley's fourth, but Notre Dame's got to be patient here and not miss any more bunnies like they did in the last possession by Dragovich. Under six to go, Cooley is back off the bench, ready to check in. Grant going off the bounce. Nice play by Pinkston on the help. Got a hand in there to pick it. Javon foul by Martin. That might have been one of Villanova's best defensive possessions. First cheek on the drive, just drop stepping, really doing a great job. Grant clearly just wants to take him to the rack, and Pinkston on the weak side recovery, just stripping and attacking coast to coast. And that is now the fourth personal foul on Scott Martin. That looked like Jay Wright's old teams right there. Just great man-to-man, -man, tough defense. When the guard tries to drive, just cut him off at the angle. And then when he gets loose with the ball, attack him with help and make him pay. Davon Pinkston. Will he have gas left in the tank? He has not come out of the game yet tonight. Gets the free throw there. He has been critical. 19 points now to lead the way for Nova.
Had that huge effort against Providence a couple of games back. 28 points, 14 rebounds. Cooley, double team, splits it, and he gets fouled. Sixth team foul on Villanova. Next one will send the Irish to the line. Well, that's where you, if you're going to trap, and that's what Villanova clearly is doing with Cooley, they've got to be strong with the trap and body up. They could have drawn the fifth foul on Cooley. Second foul on Kennedy. Grant struggling with his shot tonight. He's just one for 11. Martin strong to the hoop, and he gets fouled. Villanova's trying to body him up down low and get him into an offensive foul situation here, but they trapped him on the previous possession, but one of the things you have to teach your young defenders if you're going to double on the box is not reach in with your hand and try to get the steal, but play with your chest, put your hands up above your head and make him pass out of the double team, or if he wants to drive through it, just take one in the chest. One-on-one -on -one from Martin hits the first. Five points, five rebounds. On a night when both Martin and Grant have struggled from the floor, they are hanging around down nine. They've trailed by as many as 20 tonight. Let's see if Marcus Kennedy can carve up a little space down in the low box. Pinkston. It's just the one pass and up way too quick. They've got to use some clock, probe the defense, make the defense work. Atkins able to lean in to Kennedy, and Marcus Kennedy has just picked up his fourth. Smart by Atkins. Well, that's what happens when you take a bad shot on the offensive end and a quick shot. Your defense never gets set coming back in transition in Notre Dame. Looking to push the pace a little bit, understanding that the clock's dwindling down. Atkins, 35 minutes. He hasn't come out either tonight. Hits on the first. That's what Jay Wright was talking to us, Beth, about before the game. Building the core, teaching these guys the game on a day-to-day -day basis, understanding every aspect of the game. And Clearly, they're still learning about what's a good shot, what's a quick shot, and how to use clock. Seven-point lead, four and a half to go. Sutton, the skip to Pinkston. And the block's going to be called on Eric Atkins. That'll be the third on Eric. And that'll send Pinkston to the line. Ninth team foul, so uh, not quite the double bonus just yet. Pinkston a free throw away from a 20-point effort. It's a, it's a funny feeling when you... Look over at the Notre Dame bench. Mike Bray, he coaches the same way basically every night with this with this ball club. That's why they've been so successful. And they're looking to tie a school record with their eighth straight win. And it seems like he feels very confident still, even though they're down nine. Third game in over 20 this year for the freshman Pinkston. Atkins on the change of direction. Gets it high and up and in. Now that was a tough move by Atkins. Ty Johnson's done a nice job all night long defending him in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And that time really gave no ground or any angle, but Atkins found a way. Into the lane, the runner from Sheet Mill. He's got it. Atkins pull up three. Sutton running out at him. Irish trying to get their eighth win in a row. They've been down all night. They've got 341. But so much more ahead for 60 minutes, guys.
Thanks, Dari. We've got 341 to go here in Philadelphia. Villanova looking for the upset of 25th ranked Notre Dame. And a uh, stout defensive performance for the Cats so far tonight. Well, one of the reasons Jay Wright has been successful over the years is he has been able to adjust it tonight. A brilliant game plan. Went with the big lineup. Villanova traditionally guard heavy tonight. They went with the power group and it's paid off. Possibly very active in the paint. Had closed off gaps, blocked shots, and just been really physical with Notre Dame. Seven blocks for the team. They have held the Irish to just 32% shooting. And for Notre Dame, Grant one for 11. Martin one for nine tonight. But they are still hanging around. I don't know has been successful. Four, five, six passes and then attacking from the wing with either Pinkston or Cheek into the gap area, getting into the lane. Notre Dame gets the turnover. This seven-point deficit, the closest they have been this second half. Atkins to Cooley. And now they're even closer. Down to five. With 3.14 to go. Well, Atkins on the previous possession probably took a quick three that was a little quick and looked like he was going to do that again. But the big guy, Cooley, rim running with the finish. They haven't been this close since midway through the first half. Again, a lot of dribbling out on the perimeter, and Jay Wright feels it and seals, sees it. And Jay Wright knows that his best leader is over on the bench in a sweatsuit, and he's going to have to probably look to a freshman point guard, Ty Johnson, to make some but here in the second half on the glass, plus 10, and out on the run, plus 10, including that last basket by Cooley run into the rim. Against this zone, I think Jay Wright might want to think of going to Hilliard as a wing shooter and put Pinkston back at his power forward spot so he can operate a little bit into the middle of that lane against Notre Dame and maybe draw the fifth foul on Cooley, take it right to his chest. Cooley and Martin both playing with four. Pinkston lost it. Who touched it last? All three officials will converse. Days with Villanova. Three seconds here on the shot clock for the Cats. It's got to be Cheek with a quick one here. He's got to come to the ball. Sutton will try. Air ball. I think the officials are going to talk. I think the shot clock buzzer went off before the ball actually touched the ground out of bounds. Because Sutton's shot did not hit the rim. And it is a shot clock violation. Timmy Higgins with the call. There again, the lack of veteran experience. That's where one of the veterans has to has to come to the basketball, Cheek or Pinkston. The only guy that really moved to get open was Sutton, the least likely guy you want shooting that three from the corner at the end of the clock. Grant takes the handoff, skips it to Connaughton. Got the three! 15 for Connaughton on five triples tonight. And Notre Dame does a great job of knowing where each other are on the court and that time to skip against the help side defense Kingston walked with it Irish fans thinking back to the West Virginia game a couple of weeks ago they were horrendous from downtown and then three late triples absolute daggers from Atkins Martin and Grant, and now Connaughton with a big one here. Uh, they're going to go into the big fella, Cooley, on this possession. There's no doubt about it. He hasn't touched it in a few, so they'll, they'll give him a little feel down low and see how Notre Dame reacts. Atkins. Off glass, count it! And Notre Dame can take the lead at the line. They have erased a 20-point deficit with 143 to go. 
Well, again, with really nothing there because Villanova playing solid man-to-man -man defense, clogged up the middle. Atkins just driving in and making something out of nothing, drawing the contact. Not a lot there, but a great feel and touch off the window. Notre Dame is in front. Ty Johnson, the freshman at the point. He'll pull up. Short. Tip no good. Cooley's got it. Again, a no pass possession for Villanova. The point guard averaging three points a game, not looking at all to Cheek or Pinkston. Atkins leaves it off for Grant. Grant for three, and he got another one. Connaughton's triple. The three-point play old-fashioned from Atkins, and now another three from Grant. Where do they get the confidence? Where did it come from? Blocking foul called on Grant, and Cheek will go to the line. 13 unanswered points for Notre Dame. Well, the major moment, and there's been a lot of them in this half, but they've all come in the last four or five possessions. Terrific defense. Notre Dame switched to the 2-3, and then just finding the open man, spacing the court with the skips, and then out of transition, understanding defensive play, forcing the turnover, the bank off the window, plus the foul. And then the dagger from the young gun, whose dad knows how to do it too. <laughs> Tremendous push by Notre Dame late. Cheek at the line, gets one back. So good in the first half shooting the basketball. They have just four baskets here in the second half. It's a one possession game. But having said all of that, Villanova's defense has still been very solid. So they just have to hold their ground here. Notre Dame's made a ton of difficult shots. So they can't gamble, they can't panic, just play solid. Timeout, Notre Dame. That will be their final T.O. Both teams in the bonus. The possession arrow is with Villanova. Thirty-one seconds to go. Nineteen on the shot clock. Notre Dame's got the ball and a two-point lead. They are is coming up next with all the highlights of a busy day in college basketball. At the end of the clock, Notre Dame will run the flat ball screen. They'll run, they'll space the court with their shooters in the corner, and they'll have Cooley come up and set one for Atkins at the top. If they double, he'll slip to the basket. He's very good and adept at reading the defense. If you give him a little space, he'll fly to the rim and finish it. Here you'll see it right here at the top. There's the screen. The double on Grant. Back to Jaron. Shot clock winding down. He'll have to jack one up. No good, tipped around, and Villanova's got it. And a timeout called by Jay Wright. 8.7 on the clock. And the officials will get together. They had possession of the ball with over 10 seconds to go. But they will keep it at 8.7. Well, more importantly, what what is the game plan and the strategy? I think that Notre Dame has to pick up a little bit of soft pressure, probably, possibly at half court, just on the basketball, so Villanova doesn't rush the ball up the court or set a quick ball screen. Now, again, Pinkston is the most dynamic and they're clearly their best one-on-one -on -one player. He's got to get the ball somewhere in the middle of the floor 
top of the key foul line area and try to drive the ball at Cooley either to get a foul or get it up on the rim. They've got to get it up on the rim really quickly. Cheek inbounds. Johnson across midcourt. Ty Johnson into the lane. He'll scoop it up. No good. Sutton. The stick back is in with nine tenths of a second to tie it. The launch by Atkins. Overtime in Philadelphia. As a huge night continues for Maurice Sutton. And Sutton makes the play late to tie it. Now, more importantly for Jay Wright, he's got, he's got to get some sort of scheme against this zone because they have struggled mightily against the Notre Dame 2-3. They've got to get somehow get Pinkston more involved where he is a threat to be a triple threat. Not only a guy that can score from the outside, but also pass and create for other people. Not in the corner, but in the middle of the floor. Atkins has played 40 minutes for Notre Dame. Pinkston all 40 along with Dominic Cheek for Villanova. The only foul situations for the guys on the floor here. Cooley and Martin playing with four for Notre Dame. And that's another option, Beth. A great point is that they can go into Yaru. They can post him up even in the zone in the middle of the lane. It will space the floor a little bit and throw it right inside. And have Yaru go right at Co Cooley's chin and see. Sometimes you forget. You get your fourth. And he got his fourth with six and a half minutes to go. Sometimes you forget you have four because the game flows on. And no, none of the coaches remind you. And all of a sudden, you're on the bench with the fifth. Johnson in the Sutton screen. Now Pinkston. There they go inside to Yaru. They try and attack Cooley. Sutton. Down on the floor, finally tied up, and the hell ball will stay with Villanova. That's terrific offense. So that's what Villanova has to do. That's their base set against the zone. They like the ball screen, and then they overload and duck in on the overload. And good entry, good post up, good carved out space by Yaru. He just couldn't finish. Luke with four points, going on with 11 rebounds today. Inbound tipped away, and the Irish have it. Oh, just a dreadful play. You've got a ball fake. You're taking the ball out of bounds. You've played here all night long to get to this point. You can't do that. Atkins back to Grant. Walk with it. Grant, Atkins, and Connaughton all with either a three-pointer or a three-point play in the final three minutes, spurring Mike Bray's club on a 13-0 run to get back in it. Cats hanging on late and getting the Sutton put back with under a second to go in regulation. The 2-3 zone, Pinkston playing a little point forward against the zone. Sutton. He's having a night to remember. Well, why not? He feels this. He looks pretty good and from that spot. Who would know that he could make it? He, you haven't seen that on tape. He only averages two a game, but Notre Dame has to understand he's made a few of those and they have to come up and guard him a little bit. He's only scored 41 points all season coming in. He's got 12 tonight. Atkins runner. Another good hustle on both sides for that loose ball. Hell ball will stay with Notre Dame. On both sides. Feeling the intensity of this game. More bodies around the glass and on the rim. and More contests and resistance on drives. Take the lead. Uh, not a good shot by Grant. They've got to run things through Cooley. At least let his mitts touch the ball and 
They've kind of avoided him and ignored him in the last few possessions. They have to understand he's high percentage and will draw a lot of attention, which will open other things up. Sutton is 10th rebound. He's got a double-double tonight. 12 points, 10 boards, four block shots in his first start of the year. Pull up, Johnson short. And Johnson hurt his ankle on the play coming down. Connaughton, sixth triple of the night for Pat Connaughton. All is scoring from outside the arc. Villanova not back on defense. And John is it Cheek? No. It's the old veteran. <laughs> Maurice Sutton. Putting it back in with under a second to go. Connaughton, that last triple tying his career high. He's got six of them. Six for 11 tonight. That was an injury stoppage, by the way. No timeout charge. Pinkston's drive. The kick out. Hilliard. Short on the three. Tipped around. Nova's still got it. Hilliard. Pinkston three. Good. Ties it at 65. 24 for Javon Pinkston. No effort and energy and attitude tonight for Villanova. They will re they refuse to die. Grant answers with a three. Cheek was fighting to get over the screen, but he was injured on the play as well. I think on both these last possessions, the defense has never got too quickly. They've got to move the defense a little bit. On the possessions where they've gone one pass or no pass, that's when they've come up with nothing. Notre Dame needs a win here to stay in a second-place tie with Marquette in the Big East. You get that double bye in the Big East tournament. They've got four games left on their schedule after tonight. Villanova. Pinkston. Air ball coming across midcourt without a pass. Well, Jay Wright just spent... 45 seconds to a minute with his team and I, and I will guarantee that's not what he drew up absolutely not and Notre Dame will work some clock under a minute to go and on the drive Atkins they swing it around Connaughton looking for his seventh three of the night What a difference from no passes at one end, Tim, to I think everybody touched it at the other Good leadership. We got better. I disagree. I think there's been some magic by the guy in the sidelines. Clearly. He's held his head high. He, even tonight, when they, it was doom and gloom, I looked over there, and the guy's clapping. He's smiling. He's encouraging. He clearly loves this basketball team and has tremendous confidence in them that they're going to make the right plays. He just had to get their effort level up. And once they did, they took this game over in the second half. Seven threes for Pat Connaughton today. Cheek tried to drop it off. Kingston. He'll get into the lane. Short on the shot. Cooley with the rebound. And a foul on Sutton. Somehow, some way, the Irish... Coming back from a 20-point deficit. And it started with their defense, and we talked about it as it was happening. Villanova, quick shots, not, no ball movement, no player movement. Even in the first half, when they missed shots, they had better movement with the ball and with the men, which allowed them to get up on the glass. When there's no movement of players or ball, and that allows Notre Dame just to clean the glass on a miss. And they started to run a little bit and gain their confidence. That's why we're at where we're at.
Connaughton with 21, Cooley with 16, Atkins with 16, Grant with 10. A well-balanced attack. And some key decisions here in the overtime for the Irish. Deep three won't go. Cooley's got another rebound and another trip to the line. Well, also, but it can't be dismissed that from Villanova gave tonight. Undermanned, undermanned it in a couple spots without Bell, without Waynes, most, most importantly tonight. Just a tremendous effort, hung together. I thought they played great defense all night long. I really did. Notre Dame is very difficult to guard, but just down the stretch, just had no answers offensively, no flow, no veteran leadership, no guy to go to when they really need an important bucket. They're finding out a lot about their young guys. They're getting a lot of minutes. And some opportunities to play. Certainly they hope that will build towards the future. They've been to seven consecutive NCAA tournaments. And of course both they and Pittsburgh, who's been to 10 straight in serious jeopardy this year. Both the, those clubs would have to win the Big East tournament. And for Notre Dame, this will be an eighth in a row. Perhaps this one the most improbable. I and mean, the big comeback. Three-pointer is good from Cheek. And the foul on Atkins. That defense that you mentioned, Tim, they held Villanova, did Notre Dame, to just seven baskets in the second half and the overtime for Mike Bray's club. Well, they were ha having major difficulty guarding both Kingston and Cheek off the bounce, and they ice Jay did a good job of isolating those guys in positions where they could do some damage. They're both very good one-on-one -on -one players. Not only they got to the rim, but also created offensive rebound opportunities. That's what Mike saw that. Mike Gray saw that in the second half. They went to the zone. Villanova got standing around and took a lot of bad shots. Atkins misses on the first. And cheers of Let's Go Irish now. Carrying the Wells Fargo Center. Johnson hits that one in the waning moments. And a huge road win for the Fighting Irish coming back from 20 down. And they have tied their longest winning streak in Big East play with their eighth in a row. They stay tied for second place in the Big East at 11 and 3. Terrific effort from Villanova, but unable to finish the task here tonight. Once again, the final score, Notre Dame 74, Villanova.